Hey all, this is Ed Tom, just doing a little update video to let you all know what's coming up. And I got a bunch of questions from the Patreon, a backlog that needs to be cleared out, seems to be a running theme with this channel. So uh, let's get to it. Uh, there wasn't really much to say in regards to what's going on right now. By the time this video goes up, the Storyteller playthrough should be done. That was a, uh, a quick and easy one. I would recommend checking that out if you want a bit more of myself and Richie. We've started doing shorts, YouTube shorts, and uh, we actually are coming to the end of our backlog on that. So if you guys have any, like, moments that you uh, happen to have memorized that you want us to turn into shorts, please let us know, because while I do have all the footage available to me and I'm trawling through it, sometimes you need another set of eyes, you know? So just put them down there in the video comment section and I will go over them. In regards to upcoming stuff, uh, coming tomorrow at the time of this video going live, it's the start of the Super Mario 64 playthrough. It only took us about 16 or so years to get an actual non-stream playthrough of that game on the channel. That'll be a 100% run, and that's myself, Flame, and Richie. And then at the end of August, we have a couple of Sonic games for y'all. It's been a while since we did a Sonic game, at least this year anyway. Uh, Sonic Pocket Adventure. That'll be a long play, and then a two-part playthrough of Sonic 3D Blast, the Saturn version, which I don't think we've done on the channel before. And again, that's at the end of August. And then in September, we're going to have a couple of new playthroughs. The first one will be uh, Pokemon Scarlet with Spar and myself. And then we have a solo playthrough, Astro Bar. I am... Super excited for this. Both playthroughs in September, honestly, but uh, this one in particular. And I seem to recall, at the end of the last Digital Disney Fun, well, the first Digital Disney Fun, to be pedantic, that I promised you an epic Mickey playthrough. And wouldn't you know it, a remaster of it is coming out. So uh, once that drops, we'll uh, see about setting up a marathon playthrough of it. And while we're on the subject of the Digital Disney Fun, I'd like to do another one of these in uh, December of 2024, but I need some game suggestions. So I, I ran through most of the ones I'm super familiar with, so uh, feel free to leave suggestions for that down below as well. And now we're going to move on to the Q&A backlog. These questions were submitted from patrons over on the HFC Patreon. If you want to help support the group, you can uh, join at the $10 tier, and that will get you early access to videos when they're done, not when they go live. Uh, you get access to the HFC Patreon Discord, as well as the actual uh, HFC Discord. And uh, you can also put in a question request once per month. Keep in mind, since this is a backlog, you'll hear the uh, same name multiple times, since uh, people like to send in questions month to month, so J just so you don't think you're going crazy or anything. Alright, here we go. This question comes from Ronald D. Rankin. What character from a movie, book, or show do you relate to the most, and why? I guess if we want to stay stereotypical, it would be uh, Steven Universe, because, you know, I see a lot of myself in Steven, especially uh, from future onwards he you know he's a little bit sarcastic uh he likes to uh push his problems down a lot so they don't affect other people i, I really don't like discussing personal stuff at least nowadays you know when it was losing my house tier problematic i kind of had to ask for help then but uh in regards to like depression anxiety etc not really something that needs to be brought up but uh steven just tries to do good I try to do good as well, even though I would consider myself an asshole most of the time. So, yeah, that is an answer, stereotypical as it is for me. Revenant asks, Have you ever thought about doing another Command & Conquer video in future? One based on the Tiberium series. I love the videos you did with Red Alert 1, 2, and Yuri's Revenge. Well, funnily enough, Volk and I have been trying to get a new series of Enter and Volk's spot of PC going, but uh, since Volk is... You know, a full-time working lad, and I'm self-employed. Our recording sessions don't really sync up most days, but uh, we are planning something. I can't say whether or not it will come to fruition, but we'll keep you posted. We'll keep you updated, even, as to uh, how that's going. Shadow Reaper? Continuing questions about Tom Topia. I believe this was uh, <laughs> a series of funny questions that Shadow Reaper started last time. What is your major export? Tea? Is anyone really surprised? Banter, I guess. That's like our uh, other main export. Ronald D. Rankin again. 
If Sega came to you and asked you to help make the next Sonic game, what ideas would you give them? Set it in the IDW universe, which is canon to the games. You know, include characters like Whisper and Tangle. And basically make the open zone a lot more Sonic-y to reflect that world. That's really the only thing that I think uh, Frontiers kind of stumbled in. You know, besides the whole repetitious nature of go to island, you know, do cyber space stuff, collect emeralds, fight boss. I like that loop, but uh, it is what it is. So, yeah, get a bit more flexible with the aesthetics, get a bit more flexible with the gameplay loop, and I think we'll have a, a super solid game on our hands. Revenant again. Out of the PlayStation series of consoles, which one did you like the most and why? I think really anyone who likes Sony would say this. It's got to be the PlayStation 2. That gen, the gen with GameCube, PlayStation, Xbox, and Dreamcast, is my favorite because games were just evolving at such a rapid pace. I can't actually believe that the relatively weak in comparison PS2 was able to put out games like Shadow of the Colossus, Kingdom Hearts 2, so many other classics. It's just, it's a great console with a huge library of fantastic games, quality and quantity, a really good controller, and, well, a lot of people I, I knew uh, seemed to have one, so there was always something to talk about. Revan Nort again, what do you think about the new Doctor Who series so far in 2024? I enjoyed it, it's been done for uh, about a month and a bit at this point, but uh, I like Shooty as the Doctor. Uh, I like Millie as uh, Ruby, even if their relationship is, let's be honest, underdeveloped. We would usually get a lot more domestic scenes where they would slowly open up to each other. But because we've lost about, I would say, four hours or so, because it's an eight episode season as opposed to, you know, the usual 12 or 13 that we would get for Doctor Who, a lot of that is like bypassed just to make sure they're like besties and getting on and whatnot. I would have liked a little more drama there. Uh, the pacing was, I would say, the worst thing about that particular season. Maybe Shooty being too emotional in like every episode. Fine with an emotional doctor. Absolutely no problem with him crying. But the thing is, if you use it too often, it kind of becomes stale. So, you know, him crying when Ruby left, I think would be the perfect time to bust it out but um otherwise apart from like a couple of dud episodes like space babies and it feels kind of shitty to say this but empire of death it was kind of a mid finale i would say the season is mostly solid i ended up giving it a 7 out of 10 and a lot of that kind of low score for me anyway was due to the pacing mostly and i don't know if that's going to be fixed because since it's on disney plus season two as uh, they will call it or series two i i forget don't really care at this point will be uh it was done at the same time as the first one is what i'm trying to say and uh, it will probably have like the same issues just because of this now we don't actually know whether shooty will return for a third one so i've heard that his ending his final episode is going to be left open-ended i really hope he gets at least a couple more seasons otherwise that's going to be a pretty short tenure for a doctor like, I think only Chris Eccleston would have um, shorter in terms of overall episode count, although he went on to do big finish stuff, so who knows. TLDR, I enjoyed the recent season of Doctor Who, but I would like to see it improve. I think everything can always improve. Ronald D. Rankin asks, are arcades still popular in your country? Honestly, Ronald, uh, being housebound that I am, I wouldn't be able to tell you. Although I have fond memories of my uh, mate and I going to the arcade around the corner from his uh, dad's corner shop and since uh, you know he would often get like change from there or the arcade would get changed from the shop we would al be allowed to go in there since we were like 12 or 13 at the time we played a bit of Marvel vs Capcom 2 we played a little bit of House of the Dead 1 or 2 play some pool it was a good time so are arcades still popular in my country I don't really know but I have some good memories let's see popular arcades in the UK. The one with the most reviews is apparently called Electric Game Box. Never heard of this myself. Uh, it has 738 reviews and it is in London. Of course it's in London. A lot of these seem to be in London. None in Nottingham. Oh, there is one. Penny Lane in Nottingham. 
not bad, not bad. Well, hey, at least we made the uh, top 20 at 19. <laughs> Shadow Reaper again. Tom Topia Part 3. What's on your flag? It's got to be a teacup full of tea. It is hot, it is steaming. Maybe some stars all over the place. A little bit of fire. Our flag is a mess, honestly. I probably shouldn't have designed it myself. Really need to uh, get a professional, though. Royal D Rankin again. Who's your favourite anime character, and why? I'm going to have to go with Goku, because he never gives up. He is constantly optimistic, always trying his best. Yeah, he's not the smartest tool in the tool shed, but I can sort of relate to that. You know, his uh, optimistic, never giving up nature. You kind of have to be to get by in the world, honestly. And it's not a case of faking it until you make it. I genuinely believe in hope. So, uh, yeah, I would say Goku. Plus, his fighting style is just really cool. Revenant, what's your favourite first-person shooter of all time? I'm going to say Time Split is Future Perfect, because it has a great story mode, and while the um, the multiplayer isn't as good as 2's, I still think it's a cracking time. It's a real good time. <sighs> Rip Free Radical, again, seemingly. That really fucking sucks. Time Split is 4 getting cancelled and everyone thinking it was going to be like a Fortnite ripoff when that was just one of the ideas they were testing internally that's the problem with these leaks people just take them at face value and don't think about game development at all second place would probably be GoldenEye although I think that's you know <laughs> pretty obvious if you know my gaming taste Goldmember asks what games from 2024 did you really want to play but I've not had time to well usually I'm able to play all the games I want because that's sort of my job but uh I've been trying to get a group together to play Four Swords. They put out the uh, GBA version of A Link to the Past on NSO recently, Nintendo Switch Online, and uh, I figured that would be pretty good, if just for like a casual playthrough and so on, but um, I haven't really had time for that. I've also been neglecting Disney Dreamlight Valley, and I really need to get back to that, so uh, yeah. Last set of questions now. Ronald E. Rankin asks, What's the game you thought you'd like, but actually hated? Now, I'm not going to say hated, because that's a really strong word, but was disappointed in is Penny's Big Breakaway. It looked so fun from, like, the trailers and whatnot, and the movement seemed so fluid. But when I came to play it, I found it to be quite clunky, the level design to be quite boring, and every enemy being penguins means there's just no variety at all. It's just, I want to like it. I really want to like it, but it's one of the only games I've ever dropped, so... Um, yeah, that's my answer to you, Ronald. Shadow Reaper, when you do eventually retire, what would you do as your retirement activity? Woodworking, sailing, car racing, etc.? It would probably be streaming. I would just continue doing what I love. Or, I would like to read more. You know, I would like to be more learned. I think you can always benefit from a bit extra knowledge, you know? Wow, this is a good follow-up question. Shadow Reaper, do you see yourself doing a YouTuber retirement after 10 years? That would make me about 45? No, I'm not planning to retire anytime soon. And that includes when I'm 45. Lord knows the others will have moved on. I will just go back to doing solo playthroughs because I've kind of gotten the itch back to do those. We have Astrobot coming in September. We've got Luigi's Mansion 2, Dark Moon HD, Final Remaster, Final Mix Edition. That's coming in October. That's done. I have done a 100% run of that game and it will be... Uh, playing throughout October, so uh, yeah, EdTom ain't going anywhere anytime soon. God willing. And the last question comes from Revenant. What's your thoughts on recent MCU content as of late? I know this may seem like a bit of a cop-out, but I kind of agree with a lot of the criticisms the MCU's been getting. Like, most of these projects I've enjoyed, but they haven't really been on the same level as you know, you went to Soldiers, your Infinity Wars, and granted, they're not trying to be but it's either a pacing issue or the story just isn't well written, in my opinion. And sometimes you just have really crap villains like in Miss Marvel. I did not like those guys. I really liked that show. Didn't like the villains at all. Except that, like, one male dude that Kamala's crushing on. He was fun. He had a cool, like, power and whatnot. But, uh, if Deadpool and Wolverine is a sign of things improving and, you know, RDJ is back, he's going to be Doctor Doom. I'm cautiously optimistic about that. Again, hope springs eternal, so 
we can only hope that the MCU continues to rebound. And no, I don't think it's been steadily great since Endgame. I'm just pointing it out there. And that's that. We are going to draw this update video to a close. Thank you all for your continued support, both on here, Twitch, and on the Patreon. The Patreon really helps to keep HFC going, so if you enjoy what we do, consider throwing us a pledge. It doesn't have to be a lifetime thing, but month to month, it really helps. Pledges start at $1, and every little helps. Thank you all, and I'll see you, well, tomorrow, I guess, for the start of the Super Mario 64 playthrough. Bye-bye.